Good evening and welcome to your evening news bulletin with Television Tong News. In the headlines, the Deputy Prime Minister denies the information released on Radio New Zealand International regarding the MA60 aircraft. 67-year-old father found dead at his bush allotment in Tatamotonga. Good market opportunity in the Pacific region for Tongan growers and the Minister of Finance together with ADB's Pacific Department's Director General signs a 39 million baanga agreement to support climate change resilience management project. These are more stories together with news from the Pacific, sports, the latest weather forecast to follow later on in this bulletin. Now for the news in details, I'm Kalolaine Tonglava Paletua. Tonga did not oppose or stop a New Zealand expert from inspecting the MA-60 aircraft as according to information released on Radio New Zealand International Orinzi this morning. This was confirmed to Radio Tonga News by the Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, who is also the Minister for Infrastructure, Sami Vaipulo. Here's Anasil Falekaono with more on that story. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, Sami Vaipulo, told Radio and Television Tonga News this morning that the information released on Radio New Zealand International are untrue. This is regards to the issue of assistance from New Zealand worth eight million US dollars. No, there was no such uh, uh, comment uh, from me. They called me from Radio New Zealand International, and I told them that uh, I had a gentleman's uh, agreement with Honourable uh, Mari Makali, and I'll respect that agreement, and I'm not giving anything to the media. Maybe they can call me in two or three weeks' time. Uh, maybe by then we have uh, done something. But uh, any other comments they made is false. Meanwhile, the Honourable Deputy Prime Minister says he has not given out any information to Radio New Zealand International regarding the MA60 aircraft issue. It's something we agreed that uh, we, we won't go into the media until we get things done. However, he has released part of the funds and it's already been signed between the government and uh, the High Commissioner here. So uh, Makali has kept his word and I don't know what the media is trying to do. And I am still keeping my word. I'm not, uh, I'm not releasing anything until I talk with Mr. Makali again. He also highlighted the importance of all media outlets to broadcast and deliver accurate and factual information. It is, uh, um, with due respect, the media should stay and report uh, things according to what's been said instead of trying to make problems between countries. Uh, even the person that called me yesterday, I'm sorry I forgot his name, because I didn't realize that he would make these terrible lies on, on the news. Honorable Deputy Prime Minister believes inaccurate information may mislead the public's attention and affect the diplomatic relationship between the Tongan government with its foreign counterpart. A 67-year-old father from Tatamotonga was buried yesterday after he was found dead outside his bush allotment. It is alleged that he suffered from heart problems and died from a natural cause. According to information from Tonga Police, the directions they received from the Ministry of Health was to bury the deceased immediately. Meanwhile, staff from the Ministry of Health and the town officer conducted the post-mortem towards the body before conducting his burial. There is a good market opportunity in the Pacific region for Tongan growers to export their local produce and the Tongan cover. This is according to the Honourable Minister of Agriculture, Food, Forestry and Fisheries, Sengsta Saulala, in an exclusive interview on radio and television Tongan news. Linda Filiai reports. Speaking exclusively to radio and television Tongan news, the Honourable Minister of Agriculture, Food, Forestry and Fisheries, Sengsta Saulala, says he believes that up to millions of baanga can be injected to the country's economy from this regional export agreement. He adds that the governments are still negotiating agreements to purchase a shipping vessel to be used for this export route to the Pacific countries. 
The Minister of Agriculture also says that this will help in transporting back to Tonga the shipment from Tongans living in other Pacific countries. Our neighboring Pacific islands, including Fiji and Samoa, are waiting for our local produce like root crops and Tongan gava. The agreement was made through negotiation between a special committee from the Ministry of Agriculture and representatives from the private sectors. Our neighboring Pacific islands have also agreed to import our taro, watermelon and other local produce. The only challenge that growers are facing is not having a vessel to transport their local produce to these islands. During the interview with the Agricultural Minister, he praised the hard work carried out by the government in seeking for an investor to purchase 40% of its shares in the Tonga Development Bank. He believes that this move will benefit the growers and fishermen when requesting for a loan because interest will be low. The government's main aim for this move will benefit the growers and fishermen when they request for loan because the interest will be as low as 2 or 3 percent. There is a delegated fund within the Ministry of Agriculture for growers worth more than a million per anga, with a similar delegated fund has been divided for fishermen to loan from. At present, the Ministry of Agriculture is currently recording the highest levels of export to overseas market in the current financial year. They are hoping to continue with this good record as the agriculture sector is one of the main sectors injecting income to Tonga's economy. The Tongan government and the Asian Development Bank, ADB, have joined forces to help people be more resilient to the environmental problem of climate change. The two sectors signed a grand agreement yesterday. The aid aims to support innovative sustainable mechanisms by providing smaller grants to help communities implement its own climate change and disaster risk resilience projects. Sin Lato was at the signing and filed this report. The Minister of Finance and National Planning, Dr. Aisake Eke, and the Director General of the Asian Development Bank's Pacific Department, Jian Ben Yao, signed the grant agreement. It is worth more than 23 million US dollars, which is equivalent to more than 39 million per anga. The monetary assistance is targeted for climate change risk management program. During the signing ceremony, the finance minister highlighted that the grant will help improve and support the work towards boosting a more climate change resilient country. Meanwhile, the Director General, Mr. Yao, stated that the assistance is timely, especially after Cyclone Ian devastated the Ha'abai group of islands. He says the initiative will assist Tonga with constructing climate-proof infrastructure and improving long-term sustainability. Also supporting the project is the Asian Development Bank's Pacific Sub-Regional Office, SPSO, based in Suwa, Fiji. Witnessing the signing of this grant agreement was the Regional Director of SPSO, Robert Johnsey, among others. For Television Tonga News, I'm Sini Lato. The Tongan passport alleged to have been issued illegally to an Asian woman has been seized by local authorities despite all charges laid against her has been dropped. This was Principal Magistrate Salah Simafi's third, third order yesterday to the accused Min Wang. The first and second orders involved the decision to withdraw all charges against Wang and her co-accused, Nayan Zheng. Wang was charged with three counts, while Nayan was charged with six counts related to holding false passports. Wang was alleged for the possession, usage, and having no legal authority to use an illegal passport, while Nayan Zheng was alleged for abetting Wang to commit a crime. The principal magistrate, Salah Simafi, says, the decision is based on Section 21 in the Passport Act. The rest of the orders include all items seized from both accused to be released except the passport. The two accused will also be released and is traveling, ban lifted. The decision is the result of the jampa between the Crown Prosecutor, both accused, with their legal counsel presiding, and Principal Magistrate Saleh Simafi. Tonga ranks third out of the total 15 Pacific and Asian countries in the world where its government has the ability to ensure political stability and to solve its democratic affairs with the absence of violence. This was the result of the survey conducted by the World Bank in 2010 with the top country on the list as Singapore, followed by the Japan, with Tonga ranking third. 
Linda Filai with more on that story. The Director of Asia-Pacific Governance and Democracy Initiatives Research Program from the East-West Center, Dr. Sharpia Shima, highlighted Tonga's success during the 2014 Jefferson Fellowships currently underway in Honolulu. Fifteen senior journalist news reporter and producers from Asia and the Pacific, including radio and television Tonga's reporter, Fatai Fainga'a, According to Ms. Fainga'a reports for today's news bulletin, Dr. Jima says indicator put in place to ensure this stability is the government's capability to be transparent, accountable, and to remain credible to its people to ensure that the 1611th riot in 2006 will never be repeated in Nugalofa. Dr. Shima says this has been a good step for Tonga, especially when it's current underway with its democratic transition since 2010. He adds some of the steps Tonga need to take to retain themselves on their current state of affairs is ensuring that they remain independent from any influence of its donor partners. Good governance is also an alternative that can retain Tonga on the third rank together with ensuring a non-biased rule of law. Also from court, two young men have been charged for carnal knowledge of a child. The two accused are alleged to have performed the offences in different locations, areas with different victims. Both accused were called in the magistrate court this morning and are expected to reappear in court next month on March 17th. From a separate case, two accused alleged for theft and embezzlement from the Layola duty free shop were called in court this morning. Baya Savo of Kolomotu appeared together with Katalau via Ila Fasmoyafi before the magistrate. Baya is alleged for theft and embezzlement of 81,000 Baanga while working for the company. It is alleged the crimes were committed between November 2012 to October 2013. Both accused will reappear in the same court next month, March 24th. Meanwhile, police are still investigating a third suspect accused in this theft and the embezzlement case. Four villages in the Western District are fortunate to receive assistance from the Council of Churches in collaboration with the Act of Peace. This assistance is to the tune of 15,000 Baanga, which will be used under this project to purchase equipment and other goods for the fortunate villages. The project was signed today in Hofu, which is one of the recipient village from this assistance. Here's Salamo Fulivai with the details. The four fortunate villages to receive the assistance are Matafonua, Fatai, Puke and Hofua. Speaking to radio and television Tonga News, the project manager, Mona Kiyo, says they began organizing this project in 2010. The project started with hosting training for community leaders to draft disaster risk management plans for each community. Meanwhile, the chairman of the Natural Disasters Working Committee, Reverend David Tahaukinima, says this is a useful donation for the people in these villages. <laughs> We are hoping that the people of the village will make use of all the assistance and to use it wisely. This assistance is not just for us who are here, but also for the people that you are representing here today. There is hope that we will stand together to appreciate this donation. Meanwhile, Matafonua's town officer, Paula Mula, thanked the council on behalf of the villagers. This is a dream come true, and we are thankful for all the help from the United States toward communities, especially the vulnerable and remote areas. Radio Tonga News understands similar programs will be conducted to 11 other villages in Vavao. The program aims to develop a safety environment for women and children, also the people living with disabilities. The teachers in Vavao are pleased with the outcome of the successful visit from a team from Parliament's Education Unit to various schools on the island. This is part of Parliament's outreach program which aims at educating the teachers on information regarding the core functions of Tonga's Legislative Assembly. The program is targeting the teachers who are teaching students on the newly introduced syllabus in the Form 2 level known as Tonga Society and Culture or the TSC. According to information from Parliament's office, the educational team is continuing similar visits to schools in Niwa Toktampo on Thursday next week, followed by a similar visit to Niwa Fo'o on March 12, before rounding off the visits with various schools in Tongatapu and Ewa. 
included in the team are Dr. Sione Vikalani, assisted by Heti Lui, Manase Fokimwana, and a representative from civil society, Haidelensia Ohila. Parliament's outreach program is funded from the United Nations Development Program. And that's the local news. Pacific is up next after this break.